This seven foot giant was too big for the NFL. Big shout out to Rebound Football for this video we're about to react to. Did you know there's a man too big for the NFL? This is what? John Cron. How? He stands at seven feet tall. God he is so damn. big. He can't stand up on his own, but has the strength of three Oh my NFL gosh. Players. Look how he that's pushed that guy. That's just one of the 12 unbelievable Wait, wait, hold on. Look how, look how he pushed that guy. Damn. NFL plays. And that's just one of the 12 unbelievable players I gotta show you. Like this NFL quarterback who weighed even more at 560 pounds. Oh my God. He won football player who is completely blind. What? This four foot tall running back oh. is so good. He plays <laughs> Why is he so football. Small? What? But first, let's talk about the football player with half a body. Oh this is God. Dave Stevens. Oh and God. from the second he was born, his life was rough. Because not only was he born without legs, but his mom put him up for adoption immediately. Now, he could have let all that get That's to his head. Up, but instead, he wanted to do the impossible. So in high school, he made the wrestling, baseball, and football teams. Okay. Yeah, he'd run on his hands in baseball. Wow. In wrestling, opponents had trouble getting a hold of him. And in football, he'd latch onto his opponent's legs. In wow. fact, he was so good at sports, he broke multiple state records. Wow. But Look even with guy, all bro. that, he still had doubters. Wow. I talked to a Yankee scout, and he said, there's no really reality of you ever getting in. The odds are damn. That's so mean, bro. Because guys with legs don't make it, and they have to be the best. Have to be the best in the world, which means you have to be ten times best. And I just said, well, you can't take my dream away from me. But by the it's 1980s, I feel like, bro, like just let him in, bro. Like let's let's show some love, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like Dave on, became the only legless college athlete in the world when wow. he played for Augsburg University football, baseball, and wrestling teams. Wow. But despite already proving everyone wrong, Dave had his eyes set on something much bigger, the okay. NFL. Wow. And one day in 1990, Dave got the call. No, it way. was the Dallas Cowboys. Asking if he wanted to come down for what? a try. As he sat waiting for his turn at the Cowboy Open tryout Bruh, yesterday. Hey, I hope Steven they signed him. Go in the comments and hashtag hope they signed him. Dream of the NFL. It makes me feel lucky seeing him, but uh, yeah, it inspires me a lot. Yeah, it gave me uh, chills up my spine. Uh, I talked to some of the uh, players that I was trying out. They felt the same way. Indeed they did. Evidenced by the spontaneous applause Look when him. Dave finished his first 40-yard dash. Good stuff, man. What did he run? Today it meant a lot because these are a lot of guys that have the same dreams as I do. And uh, it, it, it kind of gave me chills up my spine. It just did. It, it, I kind of stopped. Aww. And it just kind of just was like, you know, that's a lot of respect. Now, while he didn't make the NFL, he did get a job at ESPN as a reporter, covering some of the most historic sporting events. Yeah, this man's done more with no legs than I have with two, but... Hey, man, okay, okay. And <laughs> that was a funny joke, by the way. But listen, bro, we're not really funny because it's kind of messed up. I go lie, bro. That's crazy, bro. I wish he would have made it to the NFL, but realistically, I get it. But the fact that he still was able to live out his football dreams through something else, such as being a commentator and stuff like that, hey, I love it, man. That's dope. This next player is missing both of his eyes and That's somehow crazy. made it onto a D1 college team. See, wow. this is Jake Olson, and when he was just eight months old, oh he was God. diagnosed with a rare cancer that caused him to lose his right eye. Wow. And then when he was 12, he lost his left eye the same way. But even though he was completely blind, Jake was determined to play football. We went through a number so of drills, and they said, oh my gosh, there's no way this kid is ever gonna you know learn how to snap truthfully i really sucked the first time so the coaches kind of just put me aside you know okay this this kid's gonna be on our team but he'll be playing left bench so every day jake would practice long snapping doing hundreds of reps over and over wow that's, de that's dedication bro. precision down and when his high school season rolled around the coaches couldn't believe it Jake was the best long snapper on the team. What? He kept practicing, practicing all these different oh. drills. And finally, I started seeing some progress and said, oh my goodness. They lined up all the long snappers and I was, I was snapping and, and it was evident that I was the best. Nah. And after an amazing season on varsity, Jake committed to USC, where in his first game, wow. he did this. So Jake also Bro, that, this that for just, inspirational wow. moment. He is out there snapping. Jake. <laughs> into the crowd. Okay. Oh my God. Wow. That is so beautiful, bro. Mm. I wish my man could have seen how perfect that was. 
really, bro. Bro, what's up with these jokes, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Yo, rebound. What's, what's, what's good with you today, family? Like, what's up with these jokes today, bro? You gotta relax, man. Now, what if I told you that there's a football player who lost their leg? in the middle of a game. Huh? In 2014, it fell off? Cody Casey was playing for Georgetown, and during a game, Wait, your he leg was can blocking fall off? a defender when he suddenly got hit from the side by another player, immediately breaking his leg. My bone was pretty much bulging out of my skin. It didn't break the skin, but it was bulging, and you know, I realized that I broke my leg. Uh, you know, it was, it was really shocking, devastating at the time. Oh so he was rushed to the hospital where doctors performed emergency surgery. Of course. And his leg was fine for a few weeks, okay. but that didn't last long because uh. Cody's leg became infected. Oh. So doctors had to perform nine more surgeries. Oh but my unfortunately, God. they didn't work. You know, after the first surgery, I thought it was going to be that and then keep going. Um, second, we realized after the first oh surgery my that my bone didn't grow for about six months. So we had to have another surgery. And, uh, you know, after that, I was trying to get walking again, get right back on track. And then it came to find out that we had a, I had an infection in my leg. So that was very devastating for me, and it was a little setback. So we had to get that all situated, cleaned out, and I had to have a couple more surgeries. And it got to the point where, you know, my leg muscles pretty much died. And that's when the what? doctors gave me the decision doctors gave cody the most important decision oh, of his life cakes, either keep his leg but it would never work again or have it amputated and after days of thinking cody decided that he'd rather have no leg than a dead leg but it turned out getting his leg removed actually saved his career because he received a prosthetic that allowed him to run and after nine months of practicing Cody rejoined Georgetown as a part of the kick wow, return team where on his first play back, he shocked the world. No way. And he turned kicks for us. And the guy's a speedster, you know, he's got one leg, but that prosthetic leg, he can go with oh that too. So we have him back returning kicks. You know, I was oh, back there freshman so year. Cool. And, you know, just to have the Aww. chance to do it again, you know, yeah, it's a little uh, different, but like just the fact that I'm back there and wow. uh, it brought back a lot of memories. And so for us as a team to see a guy out there who's been through what he's been through and nothing stopped him from being back on the field, it was just, it was like, it, there's nothing but positives that come from it as a team, from a team standpoint. Man, now that dude's a legend. Wow. But now, I ain't gonna lie, bro. These stories are sad at first, and like they're all st they're, they're sad as a whole. But when you hear how they persevered, bro, that is just so cool. That just shows you, bro, never give up in life, bro. Always try hard and work hard. Well, we got to talk about Caden Cox because okay. he's a college football player with Down syndrome. See, okay. Caden was born with a genetic disorder that causes developmental delays, but that didn't stop him from wanting to do it all go to college, play football, and maybe one day make it to the NFL. Yes, sir. Early on, though, Let's go, Cody. people told Caden that he could Let's never do it. In fact, people told him he wouldn't even graduate from high school. Damn! So Caden took all that hate to heart and proved everyone wrong. From making it on his high school football team, getting accepted into the Hawking College Hawks, and in 2021, he made his university's football team. Caden had already accomplished more than some people do in their entire lives. Wow. But during a game at Sussex College, Caden made sports history, really? becoming the first player with Down syndrome to score in a real college football game. Wow. Wow. Legendary. It was an extra point and an exclamation point. With the kick, Caden became the first known person with Down syndrome to play wow. as well as score in a college football that game. That is so freaking cool, man. That is He's so just freaking like cool. beaming. I did it, Mom. Oh, My baby did it. I, I mean, they said he couldn't even go to college and look where he is. Damn, we need to put that man in the Hall of Fame. For real. Well, look. We gotta mention the shortest bro, this college guy is tiny, bro. in football history. Oh my gosh. Jason Carter, a four foot nine, one hundred and thirty oh pound gosh, running back so who was so good he played for Rice University. Listen, like I ain't gonna lie, it looks funny, guys, because he's so small and stuff. But actually, it could be a deformity or something. So I, I know I laughed in the beginning of the video, but now I'm realizing I don't want to laugh at this because this could be a deformity. Uh, so maybe he's not just short for no reason. Maybe it's like a reason why he's short. So I'm not gonna laugh, but a D1 school. All because Jason figured out that being short could actually be an advantage. Really? See, in high school, he was so low to the ground, wow. all he had to oh, do was hard duck to, past defenders. It's hard to tackle him because he's short. This man was a menace. He'd go straight for the ankles. 
Okay, okay, that's smart. Use your size to your advantage, and literally. Guns by his senior year, he had scored 18 touchdowns. Damn! 92 tackles. Those stats were so good, he was able to walk onto a D1 football team. And in 2013, he made history by becoming the shortest player to ever play in a college football game. What? what a great story UTEP taking on Rice. Fourth quarter, I was up big. There he is. Look at him. Getting his first that is career so cool, carry. Bro. The 135-pound, oh, 9 Carter's the shortest player in FBS. Wow. I guess size really doesn't matter, huh? Well, uh, <laughs> there are players you wouldn't believe exist oh my in the gosh. NFL, like Derek Coleman, because this dude made it all the way to the league, even though he was deaf. See, in football, what? hearing is everything. You gotta hear what plays the quarterback is calling. You gotta wow. communicate with your teammates on defense. Hell, if you can't hear footsteps, you might get blindsided. So Derek had to invent an entirely new way of playing football Wait, what? by spending hours perfecting lip reading. Figuring out exactly what play was being called, not only through helmets, but through mouth guards. And what? this paid off big time. Because Derek became wow. one of the best players to come out of California, earning a full ride scholarship to UCLA. And in 2012, Dedication. Derek made history. No way. Signing with the Seattle Seahawks. Ah! And becoming the first offensive deaf player in NFL history. Wow, first offensive deaf player in NFL. Hey, just for that, bro, I'm about to throw in a Seahawks jersey. Hey, man, you see it. Big DK Metcalf. Yes, sir. Let's go. You are the first person in the entire history of the NFL wow. to play offense and be deaf. You think how my football career started? I thought it was some pantyhose to cover my hand. And now I'm here in the NFL. I think everybody had their unique story, and that just happens to be mine. Wait, how can he talk? I'm confused, bro. Go in the comments and help me understand. Like, if you never heard anyone speak, how do you... I'm confused. I don't want to offend or say anything wrong. Go in the comments and let me know. I'll pin your comment. Inform us. Give us actual information, like actual informative information, so everyone that's also thinking like me and wondering can get an answer. Did you feel like you had a disability when you were growing up? It wasn't really until I got to junior in high school when I started realizing that it's not really a disability, it's an advantage. Mm. Advantage? How? I can turn people on and off whenever I want. Oh. <laughs> Man, he might not be able to hear, but I'm cheering for him. Now, That's we got to talk oh about how gosh. a college player is dominated with one hand. Wow. The Alex hurled Burt, and he's been missing his left arm since Burt, but that didn't stop anything for him, because Alex was able to train one arm to become ridiculously strong, which was enough for him to become one of the best linebackers in the state of Oregon, even winning the conference player of the year. But the craziest part wow. is, this man got a full ride scholarship to play wow, D1 so football for the University of Montana. This week he okay. found out he'll play Division I football on a full ride scholarship at the University of Montana. Wow. Anything's possible. I mean, I never saw myself playing college football. This isn't about his arm to me. This is about him being a great football player and a great human being. Yeah. And that's the part I'm most proud about. And after his football yes, career came to an end, Alex made his disability look like a superpower when he became a one-armed power wow. lifter. Thing. This dude is deadlifting over 600. Oh my God, look how red his face is. Is that normal, guys? I don't think that's a normal amount of red, brother. I think his head is about to explode. Pounds with basically one arm. But Damn. down in Louisiana, there's a player that's going to change how football's played. Forever. Is that a girl? So we gotta mention the college football player. That's oh, a woman. I'm that's talking dope. about Haley Van Voorhis. Okay. And since she was five, all she's ever wanted was to make it to the NFL. Wow. So she practiced every day. Damn, she she's stronger than me. I need to get my muscles up, bro. Recruited by Shenandoah University, but not as a kicker, not as a punter, or even a long snapper. This five foot six, 145 pound girl is a safety. Oh, but safety. even though she was on the team, they sidelined her for three years straight. What? And she used that time to sharpen up her game until 2023. Cause during a game against Juanita College, she made sports history. The five foot six safety came into the game with Division Three Shenandoah up 26 points against Juniata College, registering a quarterback hurry on the way to Good a stuff, Shenandoah boy. Win. Good stuff. Did okay. That quarterback know what or who hit him? I've had some people come up to after the game until I take my helmet off. They're like, "Dude, I didn't know you were even a girl." <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be tackled by her. But one college football player made it to the NFL while battling cancer. Oh, See, God. James Conner had it oh, all. Yeah, I remember a starting him. spot Steelers. in the Pittsburgh Panthers and a bright future ahead in the NFL. Then one day, his dreams became a nightmare because James had a crazy headache and night sweats. So he went straight to the doctor where he received the worst news of his life. A tumor was surrounding his heart. Doctors told him he'd only have one week to live unless he got an emergency surgery. So James didn't waste a second. He got the surgery underway and went through chemotherapy. 
Now, patients that go through chemotherapy are usually exhausted and have trouble doing any physical activity, but not James, because the day after each chemo treatment, he went and worked out with the Pittsburgh football team, doing sprints, lifting weights, and doing agility. For James, not playing football wasn't an option, but in 2016, he witnessed a miracle. After 12 chemo treatments, he was 100% cancer-free. Wow. So y'all good? Oh, man. <laughs> Yes, May 23rd was the day I got that call telling me I made a complete recovery. Thousand pounds lifted off, you know, feel like I could jump a 16 inch vertical. God, great. So with the cancer out God, of his body, man. James immediately went to work. Yes, sir. And after the season ended, he declared for the NFL draft. Yes, sir. Where, with the 105th pick, he was selected by his hometown team the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. In the 2017 NFL draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select James. <laughs> oh. How do you feel to be a Pittsburgh Steeler? Oh, man. Unbelievable feeling, man. Right back at Heinz Field, ready to get number seven. Did you see this happening a year ago, two years ago? You know, I, I knew I was going to be in the NFL one day. This is you know, everything I've been through, a little bump in the road. Uh, but, but I'm thankful for it all. What do you have to say to Steelers Nation? Steelers Nation, let's go. I'm ready to work. I'm about to win the Super Bowl. Let's go. Man, football's easy compared to what he went through. But there are a lot more unbelievable athletes coming up. Like the okay. seven foot monster, too big for the NFL. Yeah, the 560 pound NFL quarterback. Okay. Or this NFL kicker without a foot. And we'll what? get to all that and much more. But oh first, we gotta thank our uh, sponsor, FanDuel. No, sir, they're not paying me right now, so I'm going to skip this. But I would like to work with FanDuel. So if you wanna work, hit my line, man. Long haul. Problem. Man. Find the numbers on the screen for help. And of course, thank you to FanDuel for sponsoring this video. But we gotta talk about the NFL kicker okay. without a foot. See, this is Tom Dempsey, okay. a football player born Bro, without how? most of his fingers on his right hand, wow. and missing all of his toes on his right foot. So playing any sport seemed impossible. That's crazy. But one thing that Tom had was incredible strength. So in high school, after his coach told the team that they needed a new kicker, Dempsey raised his hand, and everyone looked at him like he was insane. So That's he took the cleat up. off That's his me. bad foot and booted the ball past the end zone. Dempsey wow. realized his foot was a literal brick. And from that moment on, he was destined to be a kicker. Hey. So after months of kicking, San Diego Chargers head coach Sid Gilman happened to stop by their campus and saw Dempsey kicking. He knew immediately that they needed to have him on the team. Okay. So in 1968, Tom okay. Dempsey signed with the Chargers, and they hooked him up with a new shoe that featured a flattened toe area. And bro, that is a legendary shoe, bro. Wow, I would love to get a hold of one of those shoes just for like memorabilia purposes, bro. I know that's like, that's legendary. I wouldn't even sell it. I would just hold on to it. That is so cool, bro. And function like a sledgehammer. In his first season, he was killing it, hitting field goal after field goal. And on November 8th, 1970, Dempsey's team was down two with just a few seconds left, and they needed a field goal to win it all. Only problem was, they were 63 yards out, which if he made it, it would oh. be the farthest successful field goal anyone had ever kicked. No way he so, made it. he lined up, and this happened. From that wow. day on, the play became forever known as the kick. And Dempsey uh, became an NFL legend. So, so then next, so he did a 63 yarder. Then Matt Prater did a 66 yarder. No, 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 a 64 yarder. And then Justin Tucker did a 66 yarder. That's crazy. Well, look, we got to talk about the seven foot tall, 440 pound monster that was too big for the bro, NFL. That's crazy, bro. How? Cron, AKA Junior. See, at only 11 years old. I'm alive. If you that big, you're not a junior, bro. You are the senior, my man. Junior was six foot tall and had a size 16 shoe. Damn. Child wait, wait, at like what a age? Six foot crime, AKA Hold on, sorry, Junior. Guys. See, at only 11 years old, 11? Junior was six foot tall and had a size 16 shoe. 11? This child looked like a fully grown man. So with genetics that crazy, Junior immediately started playing football. Wow. And by the time he reached high school in 2012, he became a monster. Wow. He had grown to seven feet and weighed 440 pounds, oh which God. officially made Junior the largest person to ever play football. That's so at crazy, 16, bro. there wasn't a single person. Why is he not in the junior. NFL? Damn, bro. Why is he not in the NFL? He's huge. Bro, he's huge. Oh my God. He came down with his hand, like falling over and hit me in the face mask. And I was like, felt like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> and with talent like this. Yo, for them to interview to you the after, NFL. listen, listen. For them to interview you after the game and you say this is crazy. 
for you to get interviewed after the game after going against him and for them to ask you this and you he say came this down with his hand like falling over and hit me in the face mask and i was like felt like i got hit by a truck and with talent that's like this that's junior wild. made it a goal to get to the nfl but almost immediately after something terrible happened what his biggest supporter his mother had passed away in her sleep Junior's life had turned upside down, and the only way he knew how to deal with the tragedy Gosh. was to get back on the field and play some football. And he was able to do that for a few more months. Wow, but when it came so time sad. to apply for colleges, they weren't interested. They thought Junior was slow, and they thought his footwork was terrible. And he was so big, there was a genuine concern that he might fall on a teammate and break them, which what? had already happened multiple times in high school. Wow. So he was left with no choice but to attend community college wow. in Riverside with hopes that he could lose some weight and one day attend a D1 school. And after two years of working his ass off, that D1 school came calling, okay. the Portland State Vikings. So Junior dropped everything, moved wow. to Portland, and joined the team as an offensive guy. lineman. Wow. But even though he continued to work hard off the field, even losing 45 pounds, it wasn't enough to help him on the field, because Junior was impossible to play. He had the slowest 40-yard dash on the team, and running backs ran around him like he was a seven-foot-tall practice cone. Which bro, put him at offensive lineman, bro. Offensive lineman and block. What do you mean, bro? Like, yeah, he's an old lineman. He doesn't need to be fast and have a fast 40-yard dash, and so what if running backs run past him? He's an offensive lineman. Your running back's supposed to run past you. That's a good thing, actually. That's yards. Which is exactly why Junior never got a second of play time. So wow, at this point, crazy, it seemed bro. like Junior's dreams of going pro were officially dead. Wow. But during the final weeks of his senior year, Junior got the offer of a lifetime. It was the WWE oh. asking if he'd join him as a wrestler. Wow. So while Junior never made it to the NFL, he's currently training and on his way to becoming a WWE GOAT. Now, I gotta mention though, he's not the only one who was too big for the NFL because there's an NFL quarterback that got so big, he reached 560 pounds, uh, which ruined this is his sad, bro. This guy actually passed away. We reacted to him in one of our recent videos. A player, NFL players that let themselves go. This guy passed away, bro. Career and even Damn, his so life. Sad, bro. See, Rest by in his peace senior in year of high school, Jared Lorenzen was the best football player in all of Kentucky, throwing 45 touchdowns in the season uh, and leading his team to a state championship. But there was one giant problem. Jared was bigger than most of his linemen, weighing 240 pounds. And people wondered, how could a quarterback possibly be that big? That's crazy. Well, so it good, turns bro. out, Jared had an addiction. The man couldn't stop eating. And even though he was getting recruited to play D1 football for Kentucky, he just kept eating until he ballooned up to 308 pounds. Wow, but bro. every day, he showed arm strength that was off the charts. Because Jared would end practice by getting on one knee at center field and throwing the ball over 60 yards wow. until he hit the goalpost. His coaches knew that he was special. But they told him the only way he'd be able to play quarterback is if he dropped 40 pounds. Wow. So Jared went to work, yep. waking up at 5 a.m. every morning to play racquetball for two hours, keeping up with his normal football workouts, swimming every single night. Bro, it sucks to know that he passes away at the end of the story. It's so sad because it seems like it's going to be a great story. And also took Ripped Field, a weight loss pill that was banned by the FDA. Wow. But it all ended up paying off because of the last weigh-in. The scale read 268.8, wow. and Jared was officially the new starting quarterback, finishing his college career first all-time in SEC passing attempts, and even Ooh. getting nicknames from teammates like the Hefty Lefty, j Lo, <laughs> and the Pillsbury Throw Boy. Ooh. Where are you being called? Oh, man? boy. Hefty Lefty, which still I love. Um, <laughs> Pillsbury Throw Boy, round out of touchdowns, <laughs> mobile, agile, hostile, and hungry. Now, in 2004, despite not getting drafted, the New York Giants wanted a piece of the man, so they signed him as a free agent, where he backed the best NFL team in the world, Big Blue. Picked up Eli Manning for three seasons, and even won wow. a Super Bowl ring. Wow. But his struggles with food continued to haunt him, only this time, there was no coming back. Because Giants coach Tom Coughlin put a weight limit of 292 pounds on him, saying that Jared would pay $450 per day for every pound he went over. Oh my right, every gosh. time I was overweight, which happened, we'll say it happened, it was $450 per pound per day. What's the most you have ever been over? Uh, they capped it at 1200 So I paid that once. 450 Jesus. that's three pounds. Yeah. My, my weight, I had to be between two... 88 and 292. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's just so funny to me that they didn't try to put like an athletic weight on you. 
They just wanted to restrict you to save you. Oh, getting 300. Yeah, that's all it was. That's when he realized he had a serious problem. Yeah, this is Because his food bro. addiction was so bad, uh, he did everything he could to lose weight, besides change his diet. Damn. Skipping every meal before weighing, spitting in a bottle all day to get rid of water weight, and even going fully clothed into a sauna, trying to sweat everything out. All just to barely make weight. But the moment he made weight, he went right back to the junk food. Wow. Eventually, though, he just couldn't lose the weight anymore and no NFL team wanted him. Food had literally killed his NFL career. By age 33, Jared was done playing football, and he didn't know what to do with himself. Oh, so goes. to cope with the depression, he did the only thing he knew how to do, mm. eat. So one day, he went to the doctor and was told that he was not only killing himself, but he also needed to go on blood thinners, cause he had grown to an insane 4XT, a size 54 waist and an unbelievable 560 pounds. Jared went from Super Bowl winner to morbidly obese, but eventually, Jared's addiction got the best of him. And sadly, on July 3rd, 2019, at just 38 years old, Jared passed away. Visitation was set to begin at two o'clock today here in Edgewood, Kentucky, but the line started forming at 1245. So sad, Clearly, bro. the legacy that Jared Lorenzen is leaving. Spam RIPs in the comments. Quite significant. Jared, we're told, wouldn't want anyone to be saddened by his death, so they called this a celebration of life. And what a life he packed into just 38 years. When you're dealing with a, an individual as unique as him, I mean, you very rarely can find a guy who is that talented and cared that much for people. You know, he was always uh, in, a, in a good mood. He, he was always had a smile on his face. He was always positive. And always turning heads on the football field. Uh, at first, you just see the bodies, and you're like, well, which one's the quarterback? Yeah. Uh, but then to see him actually in the film, it's like, you know, you could definitely tell he was a special, wow. special player. Who was probably best summed up by an uncle, Terry Conley. It'll be a long time before you find another one like him. Damn. Didn't even have to know Jared at all to feel that way about it. Wow, legendary. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, yo, good stuff. I think Rebound Football took my advice. I don't know if he watches my videos or not, but usually in his videos, bro, he'll talk about somebody dying and then just like move on to something else as if it's like, like he'll be like, sadly, this guy died. But on to Michael Vick and his illustrious career. It's like, bro, you like, I think ending the video on the sad note with a tribute is way better, bro. I love, this is a W video, bro. It already has, look how many views in six hours. Holy, W, W, W. I like this video, man. Good stuff, Rebound Football. I love family. Hey, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know what we do, man. We're going to do, do a health check on the channel real quick. I actually wasn't record, supposed to record today. I was supposed to spend time with my girlfriend, you know, but I was like, hey, man, I'm going to lie, this new video from Rebound just dropped. I got to go react to it for the gangs and get it out, you know what I'm saying? So if we take a look at the channel, we're at 14.1K, 17 videos. Really, really good, guys. We're looking solid. Look at these views, man. Everything going up, man. I ain't going back to y'all, boys. We going stay. It. Let's get this thing rocking, man. I love you guys so much. I appreciate the love and support. Make sure you always put God first. I'll see you guys in the next one. This is your boy Eli Mack. Rest in peace, too, to all the guys that we lost, man. Gang, gang.